Okay, we're recording. Okay, good evening. This is the uh, November 19th Utilities Commission meeting. Uh, we're starting the meeting without a quorum. We will not take any votes. Um, we expect at least one more person to uh, join us tonight via Zoom. Um, right now, I have... Oh, come on. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Hiram Cantu uh, is not here tonight. He said that he may be able to Zoom in. We have Mike Collins on Zoom. Yes. Uh, we have Bernie Clark here. We have Sven England here. Uh, Joe Gazzetti. Hang on. My phone is... That was... No, it's me. I'm oh, just wrestling your... people. Oh, okay. You're good. It's just... Fine. Uh, Sven England's here. Jill Gazzetti may join us. Janae Hunter, unknown. Krista Kennan is here. And uh, Karim Kerr said that he might zoom in. And Rich Townsend, we believe, will be absent tonight unless he manages to zoom in. Okay. Who says? Karim is trying. Okay. Karim is trying to get on now. So let us know, Bob, if that happens. He hasn't, he hasn't. And Harwim says he's in transit. He's trying. Okay. Okay. Well, so, do we have any public comments? Right. Yeah. We... There are no public comments. Are there out public there? comments, Bob? No, no okay. public comments. Uh, Zoom. Okay. Um, report on the meeting with the first selectman, uh, Carlson. Um, yeah, we met Halloween, <laughs> the morning of Halloween um, for, with uh, uh, with Tucker and with, uh, with Deanna. Um, most of the questions had to do with, you know, um, when we're talking with vendors, um, you know, uh, is that okay? And, you know, basically the answer came back, yeah, you can talk to vendors, you can, you know, help vendors, you know, uh, make public presentations. Um, you know, you're in no way, you know, uh, selecting or representing them, but, you know, they're And it came up in the context of the cogen, you know, bringing in cogen that we had discussed and presented at length at our last month's meeting. And it also came up in the context of, um, what was the next vendor we had? Uh, your booster guy? Oh, high boost. Yeah, yeah. If there was a booster vendor that we wanted to bring in that, um, it came up, do you want me to say that again? Okay. Yes, oh good, Hiram Song. Excellent. Excellent, okay, we now officially have a quorum at 7.04. We have a quorum at 7.04. Okay. So I was just saying that the um, vendor issue of is it permissible for us to invite vendors and interact with them is appropriate when dealing with cogen and also boosters which we will do in another meeting you want to speak to cell phones then we did briefly talk about you know um you know uh towers and uh vendor relations there yeah i mean i'll do that at the end i think with my presentation Excellent. is that okay okay hiram now that you're here we're gonna uh we're going to uh ask for uh well i will ask for a motion to approve or amend the minutes of the October 15th, 2024 meeting. I will second it. I need somebody to make them. You make the oh, motion. Oh, I'll make right? the motion. Sorry. I'll second. <laughs> Bernie will second it. All in favor? All those in favor of approving the minutes, aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Just making notes. Excellent. Um, yeah, report on the meeting of the town council. Um, wow. Um, so uh, Rich and I met with the town council last Wait. Wednesday night at uh, seven o'clock, and um, basically they asked, you know, um, you know, how are we doing on our mission? Um, you know, we summarized pretty basically, um, you know, where we stand. You know the things that we're looking at, you know, intensively, 
and also asked them about, you know, uh, representing vendors and things like that. And they were, you know, again, fine, you know, since we're not, you know, making a, a, a town-wide uh, representation for them. Uh, we talked about, um, we talked about towers. Um, we sat there and said, since there's no political appetite to uh, put a cell tower on, uh, on public property uh, at all, um, you know, they need to consider, you know, whether or not to open the ordinances uh, 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 subcommittee to talk about making uh, towers height increased from 120 to 150 feet in order to get more vendors on and get better coverage and left it with them there. Um, we discussed the fact that, you know, uh, we are still working on the cell data analysis and the Karim will uh, uh, give us an update on that later in the meeting. And uh, I made my usual pitch for uh, uh, emergency services coverage for mobile data terminals. So we took up a lot of time, a lot more than the 10 minutes that they'd originally allocated for us, but being uh, town council veterans, they had to let us lather <laughs> on. So that was about that. Any questions about that meeting? It was pretty, pretty basic, you know, nothing that we have discussed here. Correct. It was a good update. I hope so. Any, any marching orders that they might have said, don't try this? Um, I mean, everyone's no. always curious about alternative, you know, kind of pie in the sky technologies and satellite and all the things that we will certainly explore in parallel path to more immediate steps. You know, we've been talking about that, you know, yeah. uh, push the fact that, you know, there are satellite text systems, but, you know, if you do an SOS, it goes to a, um, to the cell phone companies or the cell providers uh, dispatch center first, and then they try and find the closest one to you, um, the problem being that there's no way to text a 911 dispatch center in the state of Connecticut right now from a satellite phone, which is unfortunate. Anyway, we'll work on that as we move along. Um, Bob, is Kareem out there? No Kareem yet, huh? Although there is somebody out there with just a phone number. That might be him. Pop him Let's up. ask. 203 970 0577. 970 0577. That's Kareem. Yep. He's out there. Pop him up. He's on. Well, he's up. He's on, but he's muted his phone. Kareem, can you hear us? Unmute, buddy, if you're on. Well, maybe we go to item seven. Yeah, you, you want to okay. text him again? Sure. Tell him that we seem to see his phone, but we don't see him or we don't he hear says him. I'm trying. I don't know where he is. Um, lastly, uh, item number seven was emergency communication and power alternatives. Um, I had a discussion with a brief discussion with uh, Russ Kimes, our uh, manager of uh, emergency uh, uh, em office of emergency management director, right? And we talked Hello? about. There he is. Hello. I am, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, sorry, I didn't. I needed to figure out how to unmute myself. Okay. Oh. Excellent. Give us your update. How are we doing? Uh, we have not made a lot of progress. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, maybe you can tell me if the, I, I don't know exactly if the contract has been signed. Do you know? I'm sorry. He's asking if the contract has been signed. Uh, we, I think Rich told me that it was, but I, I can check again for you. Yes, please. Uh, because I, when I contacted the, Developers, they say they didn't receive anything yet as of uh, today, uh, 3 p.m. So it might be just and, a communication. Okay, and that contract should go to you, right? 
Uh, no, no, no. It goes to the the company that is. Oh, okay. Uh, AI too. Yeah. No, no. I'm not in the loop with this thing. It's okay. just an external contractor. I, I just uh, review the. So I review all the the document that give the specification and the requirement. So we have spent a lot of time on it. Uh, we are uh, like it was two weeks ago. We agree on it. So now it's just to make sure to start the work. And in order to, to do that, we just need to confirm that it has been signed, right? That's it. That's the um, unfortunate, I mean, it's an update that I have. But as soon as we, uh, we have that on the docket, I will make sure that they move along. Okay. Um... I guess that's all there is to it, right? I guess that's all that we have right now. Yeah. Are we still yes. think end of year 2024 is possible? Um, the what? End of year 2024 is possible. I Well, I don't know that we know what we're solving for at this moment. I yeah. feel like it's really important to but have we, this. Will, we will get some, some map for sure. I can assure you that we will get some map. Uh, right. the, the tool to answer the question that I cannot tell you yet, right? Because uh, we need to make them work and I think after like three weeks, we will get a very good sense of uh, what's the status, and what's they can possible? even come to the to the meeting. Yeah, they will come to right. the. We'll invite them to the meeting to give us an update, right? For ideal scenarios. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And even for the for the for the the different map left and right that we ask, that that's going to be doable, right? Right. Well, I mean, there are no scenarios projected at the moment, so that's why I get confused myself. Like, that, what are we solving for? Right. Oh, we could solve like depending on the new technology. Right. Um, we can solve for um, adding, ex checking with when we increase the height of the tower, what's going to be the impact, right? Okay, so existing tower example, height would be the mission. Yes, uh, but we can also explore other technology, as you mentioned, right? In parallel, mm -hmm. let's say there's a vendor which proposed an interesting technology. Uh, we could simulate in advance um, what will be the expected increase in, in quality, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so despite, that makes sense. we we have to we have to add insist on the fact that despite we we don't need a special technology to have a usage of this uh, this approach, right? And it's going to be valid later on in the future, uh, like for the future even utility commission if they want to test to do a what if scenario. Right. Okay. Like I think in an ideal world we will begin to communicate with the individual carriers and see what their proposed solutions are using the existing infrastructure. Yes. And that once we right. get some potential scenarios from the carriers, we can start projecting. I think that would be a really useful model. You're yes. right. I've That's been <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so we'll follow up on the um, admin of that, but I think that the priorities of the exercise are established. You got it. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Kareem. Thank we you. really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, I'm still staying on, huh? Okay. Bye. Yes, yes, yes I'm please. Muting. Okay. That's fine. All right. Um, so uh, back under item seven, emergency communication. So a uh, brief discussion with OEM um, on 911 uh, communications backups. Uh, we did discuss um, the fact that uh, there is a Motorola radio data trunking system that's out there and it's quote expensive. So I asked uh, Russ to see if he could develop a, a price, you know, um, across all the emergency services, you know, for what that would be. Um, you know, the, the expense may be within the realm of possibility. Um, and also talk to him about 
the uh, you know the cheat sheet um, you know uh, backup options in case of loss of uh, communications and electric power um, you know during system outages infrastructure outages so we talked about a little bit about that and <clears throat> help that you can give me uh, getting that information out to folks. Um, I guess that's about all to say. Any questions on that? It was just a brief conversation. Okay. Just a quick, quick question. Um, what about Starlink? It seemed to be working in North Carolina and Georgia uh, for communications. Have we looked at a cost on that for for this nine one one backup? Yeah, we're talking um, primarily. We're talking about you know a vehicle based uh, systems. Um, uh ambulances uh police vehicles uh fire trucks right and um <clears throat> right now uh russ has one on has a uh, satellite link on his uh vehicle but that's the only one we have and it was deemed uh, rather expensive but we do have one that can be driven to a scene and then act as a hub for everybody else so that exists. So we're, you know, there are partial solutions out there. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, the report on the call with uh, Jim Green and uh, Tim Roche on uh, October 24th, Rich and I talked to the guys. Um, it was uh, very similar to the conversation, Mike, you and I had last week. Uh, that, uh, you know, if they want to um, come out here and or Jim wants to come out here and uh, make his uh, pitch in person and hopefully to a crowd. So I won't steal any more of your thunder and uh, let you uh, jump right into item nine, uh, your discussion with Axiom and Next Steps. Sure, sure. I mean, as the Utility Commission, we are supposed to bring some energy options to the community, or at least that should be part of our charge, whether it be solar, whether it be high, you know, axiom energy and, and, and whatnot. Um, I do think we have to, to, to try to find line on that, to offer it out to the public, but also to, uh, to have them do their own legwork uh, on this, on these projects. So what we've offered to do is to try to set up a communications, um, with the New Canaan moms, have him write an article for the New Canaanite, possibly appear in one of the weekly um, podcasts that that Michael Dinan does. And um, I always pronounce his name wrong. And then maybe Diane. set up a meeting for if we have enough interest at the library or at the uh, Lapham Center. Uh, and the only date that I could possibly facilitate that is December 12th. Kind of in, you know, before the holidays, it's a Thursday. Um, and, you know, I think it would be beneficial at least in the low hanging fruit to 100 to 200 residences plus businesses in town who could use that thermal load and generate free electricity or vice versa. Um, so that's kind of where it stands with him. I've reached out to him a couple of times. He's put together some sample flyers that we suggested that he did. Um, so he said, sent them out and the utility commission should have them from Krista tonight. Um, also he needs to identify targets in town that will fit the, the needs for, uh, what would be the most optimal for the system, because you have to start somewhere, uh, and the low hanging fruit is the best, is the best option. So what we're working towards is getting a flyer, getting a location, getting an interest level, and hopefully doing something on December 12th for that, to introduce that to the public, let them hear about it, let them know about what their savings would be, what the investment would be, the payback, uh, things of that sort. It's a great product. Um, it doesn't work for every home. It doesn't work for every business, but um, it works for many of them. And it's a good option for residents to consider if they're thinking about going a little bit more high efficiency and reducing carbon. A lot of run on there, sorry. Do you have anything you want to add since you got the flyer? No, 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 nope. 
Bernie? Sounds like an interesting one. All good. Sounds lovely. And if you don't get a good turnout in December, you can always do it in January too. Well, that's what I was thinking. If we don't get a turnout with the short amount of time that we have now, we should push this off um, to January instead. And after I agree. The, um, yeah. Because I mean, we just have draft flyers at this point, draft examples uh, from them, and not even a list of of his preferred targets as far as what he would want in town. Pulling it from the um, the public information because the homes that would the, the, the low hanging fruit to take advantage of this system would be large homes with a large thermal need, whether it be pool heating, hot tub heating, uh, large water, you know, hot water needs. That would be, uh, you know, small commercial businesses that have that um, that need. That would be the optimal thing and then roll it down further, you know, down the tree from there. Yeah, I think you'd probably get a better turnout in January. <laughs> I'm thinking Christmas parties and things of that sort. We're, to, we're right in the thick of it. Yeah. December. yeah. I know Jim wants to come out, you know, as soon as humanly possible, well, but, you know, there's... Logistics. You got yeah. it. Yeah. So, sounds great. I hope so. so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to him again via email and phone again and, and have a discussion with him. I don't want to waste his time coming out for just a couple people. Uh, we kind of want to turn out of at least 10 or more just to mm -hmm. listen to it. And maybe there'd be a couple people who think it's advantageous to, to, you know, get a detailed quote. Right. Sounds good. Okay. All done with uh, item nine on to item 10, Krista. Talk to us. Okay, Bob, can you put the presentation on the screen? Thank you. <clears throat> Wonderful, thank you. Can you hear me? You'll tell me when you... Yes, I'll just go like this. Um, so as people who have been following us know, we have conducted this wonderful detailed analysis with UCLA that basically drove every street in New Canaan, all 125 miles of it to assess cell service quality. And cell service quality means a lot of things. Um, some of the ways we've divided the data is, can you initiate a call? Can you sustain a call? Can you upload data? Can you download data with all the videos and things that people do now on their phones? Um, so I won't, we'll breeze through these few, but the, the basic concept is that at this moment in time, we have amazing detailed granular data that we need to share with the carriers and we need to work with them to come up with potential solutions. So essentially, New Canaan, why New Canaan needs a municipal advocate to improve town cell service, let me tell you. So we basically, we can kind of breeze through this. We have been revived. We have been in existence since July of 2023. We inherited a bunch of studies, um, basically circa 2012. So it's a good thing that we were revived. We also inherited at that time some cell study proposals from VCOM and PeerCon from our previous administration. And in the fall, they were not approved by the Board of Selectmen. So we realized that we needed to start fresh. So one of the first things we did was we reached out to the CT Siting Council, and that should be citing, but okay. And basically asked them, what are the carriers telling you, state of Connecticut? What is the cell service look like to you, state of Connecticut? And this is what we, we received. Unfortunately, this merges all of the four carriers together. We do not have any detail beyond it. It does list at the bottom of this page, all of the existing infrastructure that we have today, whether it's an antenna on top of a water tower or a building in town, what have you. This is all on the town's website. So I encourage everyone in the public to go visit our website if they'd like to study this map a little more. Then, since then, we have been busy. 
As I mentioned earlier, we commissioned a study with UCLA to do the drive-by test. We have the results. They were presented to the Utilities Commission and we also rolled them out to the public in a number of ways. In September, we had a PR push that rolled these results out to the public we, with the newspapers and the website and our first selectman's newsletter so everyone understood where we were. We also, had, in October, encouraged people to download the UCLA app so that you could conduct what we call an at-home test at home. And we encouraged the public to do this with their Wi-Fi turned on and then with their Wi-Fi turned off. And since then, UCLA has been gathering all of the results of that. We know a few hundred people have participated during this October, November timeframe. And what's great about that is that we can see the data that has been transmitted, but they all, UCLA can also tell whether a test failed, which to me is meaningful equally. I won't take everyone through it. This was the methodology. These were all the streets that we drove, clearly majority of the streets in town. Next slide will show us a sample of what UCLA gave back to us. And this is just one of many maps that they shared with us, but you can see where service is good, where it's mediocre and where it's non-existent by street level, which I don't know if that's ever been done before. I don't believe so. Yes, I don't believe so. I think this is the first time that kind of a study has ever been done. So that's just a sample. Then the next slide will show you kind of the hot spots. The red circles represent areas of town that dramatically need new improvement. So there you have it. It's primarily the north and the west side of town. And we knew that, but now we have data points to verify that. So now what? So what we, the Utilities Commission would like to propose is that we identify the proper contacts now at each of the providers and we develop a relationship with them. And again, at a high level management scenario, um, this takes time and research. I list here Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, FirstNet and Frontier. I'm listing here 11 contacts that were CC'd on the Siting Council's communication to us. So these are very valid contacts, at least as of April, they would have to be verified at all of the different carriers that communicate with the CT Siting Council and we would like to do the same. And we would like to collaborate with these individuals to solicit solutions to help us improve the cell service throughout town. Rest assured, our priority number one is to use existing infrastructure, which means existing towers and antennas, not new ones, not proposals, but what do we have in place now? And why that is important is because right now, most of our towers are not higher than 110, maybe 120 feet. Originally, when they were installed, they would accommodate one, maybe two carriers. We are now living in a world where multiple carriers need to be accommodated. Therefore, those towers need to be taller. And that's something that we think might be possible if town allowed it and if our ordinances were perhaps adjusted to accommodate that. And again, we are not talking about new towers. We are talking about existing towers, antennas on the water tower, and again, buildings through town. Secondly, our priority would be to advocate for what we are calling accessory technology, boosters that individuals perhaps could buy and put on top of their roofs to boost a signal, boosters that could be purchased and put on town property where appropriate. And then pie in the sky, third priority would be ideal solutions. But as we circle earlier to Karim and the study and technology he has available, we believe that if we reach out to the carriers and have them come up with ideas that we can then project what that would mean with Karim's technology and model that we have now commissioned with him. So in parallel path, we would like to also develop a collaborative relationship with the CT Siting Council they had not been super responsive. Again, they have shared this one map with the green um, coverage. 
we did go back last, uh, they provided that in April. And then we went back that summer and asked for the carriers to be broken out individually. We had not heard back from them. However, we would like to gain an understanding of their relationship and role that they play with the carriers and how they can help us move everything forward. So for that reason, we would like to recommend the town puts in their budget money to hire what we're calling a municipal advocate. And I also wanna make the caveat of, this is not a lobbyist because people like to use that word. A lobbyist is someone who advocates to change legislation. That is not what we're asking for. We are asking for a municipal advocate who will basically take the time to work with the carriers and the CT Siting Council to advocate for us, the town of New Canaan, to improve our service in an appropriate way. We would imagine that this person would give periodic presentations to us, the UC, first and foremost, quarterly for sure. And then we would give periodic presentations to the Board of Selectmen, the Town Council, and the Board of Finance as needed. So that is our ask, that we hire a municipal advocate and they will, you know, it's up to really town hall to decide what's best. Is this a staff position? Is it an independent contractor? Is it a lawyer? Is it a lay person? Is it technology consultant? You know, there are attorneys out there. We have also reached out to the CCM to ask them for resources where we could find a consultant that perhaps has done this in other municipalities. And I have provided that information to the Board of Selectmen today. So we would ask also for a budget, obviously, to make sure that this could become a reality in 2020. And I want to give us the nut. What, what, what are we talking? <laughs> you, and I, you and I have chatted about this. And, uh, I mean, I think we need to start. Per month. And I, what, I think we should start with an ask of $50,000 for the year to see, um, they would have to reach out to five people weekly, the four carriers at a minimum and the CT siding council. And, you know, an hour becomes two hours and whatnot, but I think that that's a fair starting place um, to really move this forward. I mean, now we have data points, which we've never had before. And what do we do with them? We don't want to sit on it. So, we're, so the round numbers that we've been kicking around are five carriers, well, four carriers plus the siting council, that's five contact points. A week. One hour per a week, mm -hmm. four weeks, so 20 hours a month. Correct. Okay. 20 hours a month, precisely. Questions? So we are going to put this recommendation and our budget along with other items in our official year end recommendations from the Utilities Commission and hope that others are receptive to it. I hope so. How would That's we find the appropriate person to, to uh, execute that, that plan? As I mean, that's, that's, a question. Um, we have plenty of time. Um, the budget process works that we're doing the budget now. Uh, money becomes expendable on July 1, 2025. Well, I would hope that there be a special approach appropriation Creation. between now and then because to sit for seven months I know. seems very silly. Um, so I would hope that there would be a special appropriations once we identify that person. And again, I would love the selectmen's input in finding that individual that everyone's that everyone feels comfortable with. Yeah, we really need someone who can work that, who knows that whole um, stratosphere, so to speak, all the different carriers, all the different options. Mm -hmm. And the CCM is a great resource. I know all the first selectmen in the state meet monthly, I think, and discuss. So I'm sure there's definitely a body of knowledge there of resources. Sure. That's a great plan. Thanks. We think so. <laughs> Hiram, Kareem, anything you want to say on that? Uh, no, I <laughs> No, no, I think it's good. Yep, I, I agree. Okay. 
Bernie? Good idea. Because otherwise, you, know, you have to have somebody whose charge it is to do this as opposed to us kind of talking about Right. It. Well, I think it's very important to have a centralized point of contact that we all believe in, who also is kind of, you know, has the authority and has been blessed by all the town bodies that we feel good about speaking on our behalf versus us individual commissioners picking up the phone and calling Verizon and T-Mobile. That seems very chaotic. That's a part-time position. Is that what you're saying? 20 hours a month? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Independent that contractor. Staff already that would call? I don't believe so. I think this needs to be an independent contractor situation. Okay. That works out best when you do that. And that's very reasonable, the budget that you came up with for, for consulting, uh, especially for an expert in, in cellular service and communications that, you know, basically it's 5,000 a month, you know, $4,000 a month. Right. Anything else on cell service advocate? Krista, thank you so much for that. You're welcome. It's a lot of work. Thank you for all of it. Thank you. Um, I had no uh, other additional items that were uh, phoned in or texted in or emailed in. So um, we'll hit uh, commission reports. So I'll start out uh, on the phone. And uh, Hiram, do you have anything that you would like to uh, add as a commissioner report? No, not 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 this meeting, but uh, hopefully for next meeting. Okay, Kareem, how are you doing? Anything more you want to add tonight? No, not tonight. <laughs> thank, thank you, Bernie. Um, really, just sort of two things. Um, you know, on the water side of things, I, there's just no news on where in and the sale. Uh, Actually, hold 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 on for a minute. So, if there's any uh, as I talked to Rich and I think Sven, you've been copied. Any discussion on this? I have to I have to physically recuse myself from discussions on this point. So we um, got it. So All I, I think was going to offer was we know nothing. Well, no, 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 no. I, yeah, I know. I, I'm just going to just for form's sake, two things. If this could be reflected in the minutes, that I'm just going to I'm just going to sign off for now. Uh, I can come back in a couple of minutes if that works. But I just okay. want to follow the. I just want to follow procedures. So I'm going to sign I'm, off. Okay. Count, okay, count to 10. All right. Thank, yeah, all right, thank you. We'll, we'll give you a shout. So so that was that, just the no news. But as you might expect, there's quiet negotiations going on. And I think we'd all benefit if uh, other than that regional water authority uh, was the ultimate winner here. Um, and number two, as, as you're probably all aware, Verizon is buying Frontier, right? Yes. So uh, I saw your list of that, it's just... Uh, just to make that for the record, you were well aware, it sounds yes. like. Yeah. That's all I have. Important note. Uh, I would just add that uh, I know that the town is uh, concerned about um, the uh, the payments, uh, the tax payments that we get from Aquarian for the uh, old New Canaan water property. And uh, there's a concern that there may be um, uh, less money uh, coming forth from an RWA. That's been discussed. It's not an enormous amount of money, but it's money we'd rather have rather than not have. Always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Krista, anything else? No, that's all. Thank you. Sven's all done. Hiram, if you're out there and, and just uh, listening, um, we, we can bring you back because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the next meeting is the uh, third Tuesday of December, which is the 17th. Okay, we'll be here again at 7 p.m. on 12, 17, 24. And um, hopefully by then we will have uh, resolved what's going on with our cell contract with uh, the analysis folks and uh, be moving forward. Um, last call. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Bernie. Second. Krista, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. 41. Good night. Good night. Thank you.